What's going on, everyone? My name is Dustin, and welcome into End on a Make. Uh, tonight, I just wanted to talk really quick about the NBA All Star reserves, which were announced a little earlier today. Um, I, <clears throat> I saw a lot of people, you know, talking about snubs, surprises, people they were happy for, and I kind of just wanted to take a couple minutes and kind of, you know, give some thoughts on it, I guess. Uh, so the West reserves are Damian Lillard, Paul George, Chris Paul, Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert. Zion Williamson and Anthony Davis and Anthony Davis is going to be uh, probably going to be sidelined for a lot longer than the all-star break so he will most likely be replaced with someone uh, the big snub really was Devin Booker uh, Chris Paul gets in Devin Booker doesn't apparently they were very statistically s similar in categories um, and it seems like it just kind of came down to coaches gave Chris Paul the edge Maybe because Booker missed some games or wasn't as efficient to start the season, something like that. But, uh, so, Booker will probably get named as an uh, injury replacement for AD unless they do something where they're, like, keeping it position only. Because they do have front court, back court, and then wild card. So, if they count Anthony Davis as, like, a wild card, then maybe they replace him with Booker. But there are, there have been a couple instances where injured all-star replacements have been named similar positions so like when victor oladipo got hurt uh, like two years ago d'angelo russell was the next guard in the vote so he got the position and last year i think that was actually how devin booker made it was he was damian lillard's injury replacement so there is a bit of a precedent for that happening and it's tough to think about who could get it if if they keep it front court only you know so i don't think brandon ingram gets it again for the second straight year just because the pelicans haven't really been like too all-star worthy um so like you see the jazz get donovan mitchell and rudy gobert and there was a lot of argument that donovan mitchell probably could have even been named a starter like him damian lillard and luca were the three that people were like well i kind of like him well i kind of like him and you can really make an argument for it and i've seen people say you know the jazz is the is the number one seed they're the number one seed maybe it should be mike conley who has never made an all-star game in his career which is insane when you think about the production he's had and you think about you know his teammates that have made it and so a lot of people i think were kind of like pulling for him on like the sentimentality but, you know, it's tough also being like, hey, there's a lot of parity in the league. There's a lot of of competitive, good contending teams. So it's I'm sure it's kind of hard for them to justify three from the same team, even in reserve roles. Like you can't take three reserve roles for one team. Um, so I've seen that. I think if they go front court, it would probably be as weird as it is. It would probably be like DeAndre Ayton which would be even funnier to see, you know, the reaction of people when it's Chris Paul, DeAndre Ayton, but no Devin Booker. Uh, but Ayton's certainly been good. He's been, you know, it's easy to overshadow him with Luka and with Luka's quick success. But Ayton's developed pretty well. He's a strong defender. He's been really, really unlocked with Chris Paul as point guard. And I think that that's something that, shouldn't go unnoticed and shouldn't go un um, unheralded uncomplimented I guess I don't know I'm trying to think of a word uh, so looking at that the only other real like not shocking but like the only other real like legitimate snub I think is DeMar DeRozan on the Spurs now I know he would probably be a front or a backcourt um, player I'm sure he was probably a two guard is where they had him for the voting but i was kind of like i could i could squeeze him in there as a as a small forward or something but i don't think he plays enough of it but his growth this many years into the league like his development as a playmaker this year has just gone to another level and he is just steadily contributing for the spurs who just stay winning low-key under the radar and you know that's kind of it's kind of the spurs mo like the Spurs, I think, are totally fine being the unheralded, under-the-radar team that everyone's kind of quietly like. The Spurs are pretty good. Like, let's not let's not sleep on them. So, DeMar's one, I think, really has a case for it. But as far as, like, really splitting hairs, 
I think it's way more the Eastern Conference where you see a lot of, you know, it's going to just come down to preference. Like, I'm sure it just came down to coach preference, basically, on, like, I like this player or, oh, I think this player is having a good season. So the reserves for the East, you get James Harden, Jalen Brown, Ben Simmons, Jason Tatum. And, of course, it's the three that I was the most excited about. <laughs> it's New Nikola Vucevic, Zach Levine, and Julius Randle. And uh, so those are the seven reserves. And, obviously, the first thing that stands out, of course, is, you know, Harden's there. No Trey Young, even though the, the All-Star event. I don't even know if it's a game. It's like a, like a circus event, <laughs> like crazy weekend. Or crazy night, really, even, because they're going to cram everything. So Atlanta's the host city. I'm a little surprised that that didn't kind of, like, factor in a bit more. But then you remember that, like, it's voted on by East coaches. And the East coaches really don't seem to like Trey Young a whole lot. Um, I mean, it was, what, like, less than a month into the season. And Steve Nash was, like hey, this isn't basketball. <laughs> what Trey Young's doing is not basketball. So, like, once I kind of, like, was over the initial, like, wow, I'm surprised he didn't make it again, I was kind of like, okay, yeah, I, I should have seen this coming. So Trey Young uh, is snub. I'm really happy for Jalen Brown. Um, I think he really deserved it. I think the development that we've seen from him um, is really, you know, it's really been special. We've seen him get better every year. Here he is in his fifth year, and he's just taken his playmaking, he's taken his development, he's taken scoring and efficiency even all to new heights. And even as a Lakers fan, like as a really diehard Lakers fan, I can't pretend like I'm not thrilled that he got it. I'm a little surprised that they would give it to Jason Tatum for the front court reserve, as opposed to someone like I, I'm. I know it's probably tough to, again, like I said, have three players from one team, but, like, Tobias Harris has been really good, and I could see people arguing, you know, Tobias Harris or Ben Simmons if you had to pick a sixer. But, like, Philly's the number one seed in the East right now. They are playing great, and Tobias, who was a lot of the time a scapegoat, I think, the last couple seasons because of, you know, the heavy contract, the, the low-scoring games, like, he has been, like re-unlocked by Doc Rivers like he had his great year as a Clipper and now to be reunited with Doc I think is something that has paid massive dividends for him um other guards Russell Westbrook obviously missed too many games hasn't been playing to his standard though he has turned it around recently he's kind of like I think the last five or six games been way more efficient way more impactful without the careless mistakes uh that we kind of saw early in the season um, and I think that's about it. I mean, no Kyle Lowry, no uh, Fred Van Vliet for the Raptors, and no Pascal. Um, I would think that Fred Van Vliet or Kyle Lowry would have been the two probably more likely. But, you know, the Raptors just recently kind of figured things out. And I could see, you know, I could easily have seen the coaches being like, not Kyle Lowry, put him in there again, because like he just somehow is always there. And it would have been interesting to see what the reaction would have been from NBA Twitter if it was Kyle Lowry and, you know, not, say, Jalen Brown. And you had no Trey, no Jalen, but Kyle Lowry. Um, that probably would have not gone over well. But for the for the front court, it was a little bit more, um, little, little more, like, options. It was a little more. So, first off, Julius Randle absolutely deserved it i am so happy for julius randall to get this having watched him come into the league he had that horrible injury his very first night as a laker i'll never forget that uh to see where he's come now and the development and the growth in his game i think speaks a lot obviously to tom thibodeau as a coach to be able to like help unlock this with him and get this type of performance out of him but i think it speaks to growth and maturity from him too so I'm really happy to see it. And, you know, in the same breath, I'm really happy for Nikola Vucevic because, you know, the Magic aren't very good. I, they've, I think, won four out of their last six now. They lost tonight, but uh, he's just been – he's been steady, man. He's a popular trade target. Uh, or, well, I should say he's popular in trade rumors more than like, a legitimate trade target, it seems. But he just is steady. He's like a steady 25-10. and 10, Or, like, I think he had a triple-double the other game. He just he is that three level scorer as a big 
that can also play, make, and facilitate, and it just opens up an offense. And I think that's why he's so desirable. But, you know, he's keeping the magic afloat basically himself after all these injuries. Uh, you know, you lose Markel Fultz for the year. You lose Jonathan Isaac for the year. Cole Anthony's out right now. There's, like, I think one or two others that are missing, and he just stays playing his game. And I'm really glad to see it recognized. I know that Pacers fans are probably mad that there's no DeMontis Sabonis because he has been more or less the same as he was last year, that same high productivity. I think I saw something that said he's averaging like 24 and like nine assists and eight rebounds or something like that. He's like, just fill in the stat sheet still. Indiana's still a good team. They don't have Karis LeVert yet. We still don't really know if he's going to be coming back this season or what exactly his timetable is. But, like, that team is going to continue to be, like, they're like Spurs East. They're going to just get slept on. And I kind of think fans are okay with it. Like, like snubbing a player, obviously, you know, they want to see their guy get that respect and get that acknowledgement. But not if it comes at the expense of, like, the Pacers getting killed every time they have a game where, you know, they underperform a little bit. In that same breath, too, thinking about it, you know, Malcolm Brogdon really has a case to be made as far as guards go, too, because he has been just steady paying off for them since they acquired him. And he continues to develop, and he continues to show that he can lead with that offense. And I know, you know, it's probably not as cut and dry as Brogdon's development is what made Indiana, like, totally cool with trading Victor Oladipo. I think getting someone back like a Karis LeVert plays a huge part in that for sure. But, like, I'm sure they were encouraged enough by Brogdon's ability to lead the team that they were like, okay, let's we can commit to Brogdon going forward. Um, another another for, uh, front court snub is Gordon Hayward, which I kind of am surprised to see. Like, if you had told me at the start of the season, Gordon Hayward would be a, a snub possibility, I would have been, you know, I would have been shocked. I don't think a lot of people expected this level of play when he signed that max deal with the Hornets that he did. And the Hornets aren't, you know, they're not winning every game, but they're probably top two or three most fun teams to watch from night to night. And a large part of that is Hayward is looking more like the player that was an all-star in Utah and less like, you know, the cursed player he seemed to be in Boston. And, you know, that's a huge gamble for the Hornets that has paid off unbelievably up until this point that you have LaMelo Ball running the show. You have Terry Rozier playing well, Vontae Graham, PJ Washington. Like they have just all this young talent and to keep the ball popping with Hayward running as well. Uh, it just really kind of keeps that high tempo offense going. And it's cool to see him play at that level. It's a surprise to me. Honestly, I definitely did not expect it or see it coming, but you know, I think he has a real, a real, um, legitimate type of argument for it uh the last person i want to talk about i completely glossed over and forgot going through the east guards is zach levine so zach levine was a popular like litmus test this last week it seems from everything i was seeing it was a popular litmus test to be like do you think zach levine's an all-star yes or no and kind of just like have the argument after that and i think that you know for me this whole season i've kind of been like unequivocally yes he deserves to be an all-star um I think just the when you think about you know the Zach Levine from Minnesota and from the earlier Chicago years where people were like he's just a good good score a volume score on a bad team he's just taking all the shots and you know maybe that was a legitimate criticism early on but this season has been at another level because he's he's getting those he's having those volume scoring nights while averaging, I think it's like 53% from the field, 43% from three. He's got his assist numbers up to, I think, near career highs. Rebound numbers are up. Everything is up, but the efficiency is staying at about 50 and 40, I believe. Um, and that's just awesome. That's awesome to see. And like That type of development and that type of playmaking has really unlocked his ability as a player. Um, he's trying harder on defense. I don't know if that's Billy Donovan, if that's you know, he knows he might be a popular trade piece or if it, like who knows what is inspiring it. But I think the transformation and the, the way he's been able to change his narrative, I think, 
deserve that recognition. And I was just, I was really happy to see him get that. Uh, one other interesting thing I read too, for, uh, I'll get out of here soon. This is longer than I thought it was going to be. Um, is Zion is the first all-star that has been born in the 2000s. And that really makes me feel old. Uh, it's just crazy to me to think. Um, but yeah, so Zion is the first NBA All-Star to have been born in the 2000s. And on that note, um, let me know what you think, who you think got snubbed, who you would replace. Um, or, you know, the, I see people saying that, too. You don't really have to say that. Just like, who do, who do you wish you could see get that recognition? Um, who got snubbed the most to you? Let me know. Just drop it in the comments. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, thank you. Leave a like, any of that. I don't really, there, I don't feel comfortable saying that. Um, but uh, thanks for watching if you made it this far, and uh, we will be back.